Hi there, let's spend a few minutes just revising the essence of the Phillips curve, a key diagram you can draw in your macroeconomics paper. Well, the Phillips curve basically tries to show an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment, suggesting that as the rate of unemployment falls, inflation tends to increase and vice versa. The relationship first observed statistically by the economist A.W. Phillips in 1958, who analysed decades of data on wage inflation and unemployment in the UK. In the short run, as we'll see, the Phillips curve suggests a potential trade-off between two key macro objectives. When an economy experiences low and falling unemployment, rising aggregate demand for goods and services in, uh, can potentially push up wages and prices, leading to higher inflation. But in the long run, many economists, notably Milton Friedman, argue that the trade-off between inflation and employment disappears, leading to a vertical Phillips curve at the natural rate of unemployment. Now, we won't cover that in this video. We'll just look at the basic Phillips curve diagram for your exams. And here it is. Inflation on the y-axis, unemployment, both, both of which were percentages on the x-axis. And this diagram here, there's a favourable trade-off because the short run aggregate supply curve is assumed to be elastic. So unemployment can fall from U1 to U2 without there being a rise in inflation. However, the trade-off worsens as we move up the Phillips curve and the economy comes up against capacity constraints. So once aggregate supply becomes inelastic, further falls in unemployment, for example, from U2 to U3, can cause an acceleration in inflation. So this argues that the trade-off can worsen as the Phillips curve becomes inelastic. Now, there's also something called the expectations augmented Phillips curve. You may well have covered it. Each short, each short run Phillips curve is drawn on the basis of a given expected rate of inflation. And if actual and expected inflation go up, then the Phillips curve can shift higher. So let's take the rate of unemployment here, U3, initially consistent with the rate of inflation of P3. If there's an inflationary shock, as we've seen in the living cost crisis recently, people actual inflation goes up, people expect inflation to increase, and you may well get a shift in the Phillips curve, so that unemployment of U3 is now associated with inflation of P5. So the expectations of augmented Phillips curve is a good diagram to draw if you want to talk about the effects of higher inflation and the risks of stagflation in particular.